Hello everyone. In today's um, episodes, we are trying to um, demystify current probes. Okay, as you can see here, we have so many current probes lay on the table, and um, if you ask a any EMC troubleshooter or test engineer, if you ask them if you can only have one passive device for your EMC work, which component or device would you choose? And I bet 99% of the time they will see an RF current probe. Okay, so that's why we want to demystify the current probes in terms of the basics of current probe operation, basically how they perform and what's the benefits. And we're going to explain from the basics to more advanced um, application of the current probes. Okay. Um, and if you just look at all these current probes uh, here, right, you can't help but notice that um, there are many different types, okay? In terms of the construction, clearly you can see this is a much bigger guy compared to this one. And this is what we call bulk current injection probe, okay? It is very heavy and big because they can handle a lot more power than this. So this probe actually is used for injecting uh, noise. So you put through the cable on the test through this hole and then you inject a uh, high energy RF energy to this uh, port therefore you induce uh, current in the cable bundle you test okay so that's more for injecting noise and these are all used for picking up noise now this is a special type of uh, RF current probe because if you connect this to a coaxial cable this allows you to see the current wave for inside the coaxial cable. So that's really good because, you know, coaxial cable essentially is a shielded cable. How do you measure the RF current inside the shield? Now, this probe will give you a solution. Okay, so that's one type of uh, uh, current probe. And then you can look at all these probes. They are built very similarly. They have the same inner diameter. They all have this hinge design, okay? So this is pretty good because then you can open it up and then you can put the wires on the test and then you close it. And then that's it, isn't it? So these are the hinge type current probe. And you also have this uh, closed loop current probe, right? So there's no hinge design. And this uh, actually is a, a special type of current probe called pulse current probe. The benefits of this probe is that it's a very low frequency range. You can pick up signals in down to that low frequency range, right? Because, you know, these current probes are often called RF current probes, meaning they are pretty much useful in a radio frequency range. The fact that this one can work down to a few hertz means that you can use it more like a, you know, whole sensor um, based probe. So we will explain this uh, later, okay? And here you can see this is a uh, homemade current probe, right? And, uh, you know, you can almost see the terms here and you can see I apply some uh, uh, shield. E this is called E-field shielding. So you can see like that, right? But this is sort of like when I started business, this is the first current probe I built. And this I built it based on Mr. Ken Wyatt's excellent article on current probe, which I attached to the, uh, uh, the show notes of this video. So you can have a look. Okay. So we often get questions, right, from... Uh, engineers all over the world asking me uh, which type of current probe should I choose? You, you know, they got so many different options on, on manufacturers' websites in terms of transfer impedance, which transfer impedance should I use? Uh, how do I interpret the data sheet? And many more questions. We hope to answer all the questions in this whole series. But to start, to really understand how current probes work, we need to go back to the very, very basics. And that basic is magnetic field coupling. Okay, so let's have a look. So explain magnetic field coupling. Let's have a look at the simplest magnetic field coupling device. Okay, so this is really a homemade magnetic field probe. Okay, very similar to the commercial uh, H-field probe you buy from, you know, from the market. This one I made myself and you can see the construction of it is extremely simple, okay? It does not give you any shielding in terms of E-field shielding. So this probe will pick up electric field as well. But the main coupling mechanism of this probe is through magnetic field coupling. And how does it work? Okay, so here is a uh, uh, cable, right, with positive and negative, you can see that. You can supply DC or uh, switch mode power via this cable, okay? 
and or you connect it to a PCB, whatever, right? And really, when we measure the uh, EMI noise, often in a radio frequency range, what we can do is, when you put a probe, okay, so in this case, look at this near-field probe. If I put it close to the red wire, okay, such as this, okay, and you look at it, and this lens, which is about one centimeter long, that is adjacent to the wire I'm measuring, basically forms like a transformer. Well, this is what we call current transformer, one-to-one -one ratio between the wire on the test and this little loop here, okay? So if you have a high DI over DT going through this red wire, then you have a, what we call mutual coupling. As a result, you're going to develop a voltage across this bit of wire, and this voltage actually equals to mutual inductance times by di over dt, and the di over dt actually is the di over dt going through this wire. So you induce a voltage here, and then think about it, right, if I place the probe sort of in this manner, if you look at this wire and this wire, because these two are perpendicular, okay, to the wire on the test. If you work out the coupling, these two actually achieve minimum coupling compared to this one. So that means, given a loop like this, the maximum coupling is going to be between this wire and the wire on the test. Whereas this wire and this wire, because of their orientation, they don't pick up too much voltage. And the same applies to this bit, right? This bit, although it's the same, you know, orientation as this bit of wire, but because this bit is so far away from this bit, right, and when you measure at a current like that, the magnetic field, once it's encircled this wire, it becomes negligible because the field started to draw quite dramatically as the distance is, is, is far, okay? So by doing that, you can pick up noise, okay? But this is really what we call an air core inductor, because this is a mutual coupling, as we said, right? It really depends on the distance between this wire and the wire on the test. And you, if you really want to pick up a, pick up more signals, or, make, or in other words, makes this probe more sensitive, what can you do then? Well, we all learned from high school physics, right, that if you really want to make a higher inductance, what you can do is you start to introduce a magnetic core, okay? So this is a very small, tiny ferrite core, okay? If I really want to make a better inductor, simply compare with this little wire, right? This little wire represents some inductance. How can I do it then? Well, if I just do this, okay? So now I make a inductor. So I made the inductor, isn't it? I have a core and I have one turn wire. And now, if you think about it, rather than measuring the uh, uh, current by directly uh, measuring using the probe, now I introduce this core. What I can do is then do something like that, right? So now you can see, the only difference between this test compared to the previous one is that now I introduce a magnetic core. And guess what? This will enable you to pick up the signal or noise, depends on how you see it, on this wire much, much more efficiently. Okay, so let's quickly demonstrate this. So let's demonstrate this. Okay, so this is the um, power leads we just show you. Okay, so the PCB now is powered. Okay, and I have my little field probe, right? And I'm connecting this to my oscilloscope. Currently, it is in channel one, and I terminate it with a 50 ohm load impedance, okay? So uh, let's have a look. So now if I put it close to, uh, to the red wire, you can see this is really the RF current I, I, I got induced, right? So this is what we call a magnetic field coupling. And if I get really close, you can see the level, right? On the, on the scope. Right, so that's sort of the level we're talking about, right? This is what we got if I just need use a near field probe like that, okay? Now, we introduce a more effective way, as we said, right? So now I'm gonna clamp this and uh, we do that. Look at the difference, look at the difference. I really have to zoom out, right? You see? is capturing the current, which is the noise or 
depends on how you see it, right? In this case, I see it as a noise. Much, much more effective. Much, much more effective. And more, this is what we call more sensitive. Okay, so if I zoom in, you can see the noise, right? So this is what we measure, okay? Um, but you can see the power of just adding a little um, core, and you make a much more sensitive current pickup uh, probe, right? Just by doing that. Now, if you now understand this, so you won't be surprised, right? So given this current probe, I now open it up, and you can see, if you look closer, right? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You see, those basically are the number of turns that is wrapped around this half donut shape ferrite core, okay? And when you close it, you see, this side is like this. When you close it, you have the full loop of a ferrite core, pretty much what we had here, but then you have even more turns of, uh, of coupling, so it'd be even better. So that's why this would be very sensitive in terms of picking up uh, the noise, okay? Okay, thanks for watching this episode. In our next episode, we're going to explain uh, what is the transfer impedance of a current probe and what does it really mean in terms of this region and this region, right? So we call this region, this region, different regions and how we can use the data sheet to help us uh, determine the current level we measure. Okay, see you next time. Thank you.